So for the past couple of years, I've tried and tested a bunch of different Mac apps, just because I'm obsessed with anything that might make me even 1% more productive, even though it's probably just procrastinating doing the actual work. But either way, here are five Mac apps that changed my life and workflow the most and either helped me increase my output of work or just made my life easier. First up is Arc. Chrome and Safari and anything else are basically just old news at this point. There are a bunch of new browsers that have come out recently that have way more features than those default ones on most computers, and the one that I happen to have been using the most has been Arc. I'll admit it's a decent learning curve from Chrome and Safari that everyone's already used to. It's going to take you a little bit of time to get completely used to the new positions of tabs and bookmarks and everything like that. But overall, once you get used to it, I think it can really speed up a lot of people's usage. Firstly, it's just really aesthetic. You can change the color of the app. And honestly, it's just a really fresh change to have the tabs on the left and your main window on the right. But the main actual productivity benefits are, first of all, that you have spaces for different types of tasks. I don't really use it that often because I just forget to change it and end up opening a bunch of new tasks and can't be bothered to switch them over to the right space. You also have easels for really quick note taking. Again, I don't use them that often, but I can imagine for people who don't want to open a completely new different app, they can just really quickly take a note and be done with it. There's also a section for media and downloads, which is super helpful because it means you don't have to open Finder and search through whatever file you're looking for. You just go to that downloads and media section and you can just copy whatever image or whatever it is into the main space on the right hand side. The main thing I like a lot is how they handle the bookmarked tabs because in the top left, it's just a bunch of icons of all your most used apps that you can add to your favorites. And that UI makes it feel a lot more like a phone in that sense. So for example, for me, I just have one for ChatGPT. So every time I click on it, I don't have to open a new tab. I can just click on that same one and a new chat is available for me whenever I need. And another really nice thing, which probably isn't a productivity benefit, but it's still really fun and a nice feature is that when you're playing a YouTube video or something on Netflix and then you go to a different tab or you change spaces on your Mac, that show or video or whatever you're watching will play in a separate tab in the corner and you can keep doing whatever you're doing, but it will just keep playing in the corner, which is really nice. They also make it really easy to switch from whatever browser you were coming from. You can choose to import all your bookmark tabs so that you don't need to worry about things that you've saved on those previous browsers to not be converted over to this one, which is why I highly recommend everyone to give Arc a go. App number two is Notion. I want to make a separate video about Notion because of how many features it has and because I basically use it for everything. I use it for scripting, planning videos, studying computer science at university, because it's basically my default note-taking app. It's what I do planning on or write about almost anything on. It's basically the best all-in-one solution I've come across, and it mainly comes down to all the options of formatting that you have in every new Notion page that you open. So specifically for studying, a really nice thing that I like about it is toggles, which is like Notion's main headlining feature, to be honest. So if you're studying for whatever, you can open a toggle, write down the question that you want answered, and then open the toggle, write the answer, and that becomes like its own flashcard. What's really nice for computer science students is that you can have little code snippets that you can just input. You won't actually be able to run the code, but it's nice to have a little snippet and then have all your notes around it. It's also amazing for project tracking. So I use it to plan all of these videos on YouTube. You can make it into a table format or a Kanban. So any project you have, you can just have the name of the project and then put it into any of a to-do list or a currently working on or completed section. And then you can add little tags for every project in case there's specific information that you want added onto that and you don't want to forget it. There are some downsides though, it's not perfect. The main downside for me is that the mobile app isn't amazing. So in the actual desktop app, you can open a bunch of different columns and stuff, but in the mobile app, it just becomes one big vertical page that you have to scroll through and it's just really slow. So even just opening the app or opening a page, while I understand there's a lot of content on that page, whether it's pictures and tables and stuff, that's fine, but it is something to be aware of. And there's also no Apple Pencil support. So if you're doing any maths, anything that requires you to write something, you probably can't do that on Notion, although they do have latex input support where you can just have all your math equations and symbols. But for anything that I'm writing, I tend to just resort to OneNote because Notion still doesn't have that support yet. Notion AI is also very useful. So if you have a bunch of text that you want read through and like 
changed the style of writing. You don't have to go copy it, put it into ChatGPT and then copy it back in. Notion AI will just make those changes in the page itself. App number three is Cursor that I've been using a lot recently ever since exams ended because of a couple side projects and apps that I'm building. This is mainly geared towards the computer science nerds out there. Anyone working on an app or something that they want to publish, it's basically like your regular ID but just has a chat bot right next to it where you can prompt away. You've probably heard of it by now. It has knowledge of the entire code base, so it's not like ChatGPT where you'll have to give it a bit of context about other files. I don't recommend relying on this completely if you're trying to learn how to code and build apps, but if there's something you're trying to release as soon as possible, maybe there's a part of the app development process you're not in love with, maybe you just want to make a quick landing page, Cursor is great for those kind of things, and it can save you a lot of time. I just don't recommend letting it be a complete black box where you're just prompting and just seeing the output. Try and also use it as a way of learning how the processes would work to make the changes that you're prompting it to do. App number four is Magnet, which is probably the one that saves me the most actual time. Sadly, this one does cost five pounds. There are a bunch that are free, I've tried them, but they're just not as good. This lets you easily, cleanly snap windows, probably not as nice and cleanly done as on Windows, but it's still great. The newest Mac OS also lets you do this, but I don't think it replaces Magnet completely because it's still missing a bunch of key features like full screen drag tiling, and there's still no three-way split screen, just small things like that. I think Magnet is still overall the most comprehensive and snappiest one to use. Fifth and final app I would install is just some kind of to-do list app. Arc, again, lets me just pin this to my favorite app, so I just click on it and it's always ready to go. You can organize stuff into projects, I don't really do that, I just have a to-do list for every day. To be honest, it doesn't matter what specific to-do list you use, there are a bunch out there. I recommend if you're really that app savvy, you could take a look at TickTick and Things, those are also great options. But to-do list, the free version has been perfectly fine for me. Now, another app that I've recently been a huge fan of while we're on the topic of productivity is Brilliant, who are kindly sponsoring this video. Brilliant is the app that helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in maths, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Brilliant lets you actually build your critical thinking skills through solving actual problems, not just memorizing a bunch of facts. So while you're building your knowledge about specific topics, you'll also become a better thinker, which is what these fields like maths, science, and AI are actually all about. Those are the skills they focus on developing most because they're the most important and have the most use in the real world. All the content is crafted by award-winning teams of researchers, teachers, and professionals at top institutions like Caltech, Stanford, and MIT, and by people from the companies where this stuff is applied most like Microsoft and Google. And those concepts are highlighted as the most useful, applicable maths concepts, so you can learn as efficiently as possible. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash alibahai or scan the QR code on screen or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Huge thanks to you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed or found it useful. Let me know of any other apps you guys think I should check out that are specifically for Mac. Have a good rest of your day and I'll catch you guys in the next one.